This looks like we've got some breaking news here. Former President Donald Trump has announced officially that he is running for the White House in 2024. He is running for president once again in 2024. He had hinted at his announcement being on November 15th. Today is November 15th, and he has indeed announced. I didn't think he was going to announce because it clearly seemed like the plan was the red wave midterm was going to happen, that he was going to take credit for it, and then he was going to have this big resurgence. And it just simply does not look like that ended up actually happening. It does not appear that that has actually come away. But he has decided to run for president anyways. So this is a pretty big deal, obviously. And so we see that there's likely going to be a big race between Trump and Ron DeSanctimonious. There's just so much to come from this. And it is official. You can see here it's just breaking. Donald J. Trump officially files FEC a Federal Election Commission paperwork for a 2024 presidential run. So you can see that he actually has announced this. And uh, we'll check out this video clip right here of Donald Trump actually announcing his uh, candidacy. In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. So I unfortunately ended up actually watching a good amount of uh, this announcement that he gave. The vibes were completely different. The entry level was essentially like this weird, like somber tone that almost sounded like a wedding or something like that. When he was walking in, it like almost sounded like it was like a wedding where he's like walking his daughter down the aisle or something. It was very bizarre, like somber tone. You can already tell by the audience here, this is a much more bougie, like elitist, like kind of old and rich kind of thing. Whereas like when you see his rally, it's like you see like a bunch of like, you know, like, uh, like scraggly white dudes and stuff like that, you know, that do not look like this, right? So clearly this is a much more like elitist, like polished vibe. And that's obviously very planned. I think this is in Mar-a-Lago, uh, but it's like, obviously this seems planned. Well, it's in, it's in Florida, so yeah. Uh, but that seems planned definitely as to what he's doing. And his general tone is very out of character for the Donald. He was very somber, very quiet, not saying too much in terms of being incendiary. Um, trying to, you know, stay calm and slow in what he was saying, almost like he was trying to emulate Joe Biden almost is what it seemed like. I don't know if he's shifting his strategy, um, but he just kind of goes off to basically talk about how bad the Biden administration is and how great the Trump administration was. Now, Trump's 2020 campaign is obviously tanked by COVID and George Floyd. Those two combined things, if those two things don't happen, Trump definitely wins in 2024. Um, the economy is the main thing that determines whether a president wins. Um, and that would have been less so for Trump because people hate him more, but um, he definitely would have won had COVID and George Floyd not happened. Now, it did, and the economy tanked, and everything, you know, a bunch of people were dying, everything was shut down, et cetera, so he did end up losing, um, but he's trying to do the Make America Great Again strategy again. It does seem like it's going to fall flat. This is really early that he's announcing it. It doesn't seem like it's getting the waves and the media attention that you would think it would get, um, and it's also another important question that I have in terms of not only for the media, but for myself even as to like how much should I cover Trump? Um, because uh, I had even just seen like a graph like in my public opinion class today in the lecture where it was like showed like a graph where it was like, you know, media coverage of Trump and then uh, support of Trump. And they were it was almost entirely directly corollary relationship between the two, almost like entirely like the whole way. So, you know, there's a question of how much is the media going to cover him? Is the media going to cover him a lot? And how are they going to cover him? I think that the more they cover him, the more it's going to help him most likely is what I would say, although we can't necessarily for certain say that. And I just don't think that his 2016 message is really going to be able to work. But, you know, his approval rating, I don't know where his approval rating is, if it's 34, 38, where exactly it is. Um, his base is super loyal to him. But, in terms of like, you know, in a uh, Republican primary, can he beat Ron, Ron DeSanctimonious? Can he beat him? The thing about DeSanctimonious is that he can be really good for um, Donald Trump's, you know, uh, base. He can take away from his base. Jeb Bush and people like that are not going to appeal to his base. Ron DeSanctimonious is Donald Trump. He is Trump Jr. He literally, that's what he was from the gun when he went against Andrew Gillum. That was who he was. He was just a Trump clone, a Trump Jr. That's who he was. So that just essentially means that uh, he actually is doing well with the base. I think he even did better in Florida with certain people, like certain groups, like rural voters, than Trump did. So he's scary because they're both fascists, but, you know, DeSantis is, I believe, much more competent, which is very scary. Um, 
So I think that DeSantis is a huge threat. I think that Trump likely even announced in the first place right now because he's trying to blunt, you know, DeSantis movement. Um, but there's going to be a really dirty, like disgusting, nasty fight between De Sanctimonious and Trump. And so we're going to have to see what exactly goes down between them. Is Trump going to pull out the bully ball once again that he did in 2015? Because as you can see from here, he was even straying away from like trying to like calling the press the fake news, which like that was Steve Bannon's strategy was to antagonize the news media. It ended up being woefully, woefully successful. And that's how he won. But he's not trying to do that as much here, it seems like. He's also trying to adopt, um, he's also trying to appeal to minority groups, especially Hispanics, which I think he does have the best chance of pulling with Hispanics. He's not going to get any pull with African American voters, um, but maybe some with Latino voters and pretty much none with uh, Asian voters, especially after the whole China virus thing. Like, there's no way. But I do think he'll probably get some pull with Hispanic voters, but not anything significant enough. But who knows? Maybe in certain pockets geographically in the United States. Um, who wins versus DeSantis and Trump? Um, I think DeSantis probably wins. Um, if, you know, they both run against each other, does DeSantis even run? And then the question is then whoever comes out of that nomination, are they fractured or does the, do the Republican, does the Republican party come around them? Who do the Republican elites end up supporting in this race? You know, is the media, media is already all behind DeSantis and Candace Owens and people like that. Ben Shapiro seems to be going behind DeSantis too. So, we're going to have to see about that. And then uh, can Trump beat Biden in the uh, general election? Do Democrats want Donald Trump to win? Because um, assuming that the economy rebounds, which we can't assume because we don't know what's going to happen, if the economy rebounds, Biden should be in a good position because the main thing that determines re-election is just the economy, uh, whether or not the president had anything to do with it. Um, and it's mainly the last year, not the first three years, just like you saw with Trump. Um, he'll be tougher to beat... But Trump is arguably better candidate to run against than like the, the sanctimonious, because if you do run uh, against Trump, right, if you are to run against Trump, what ends up happening is, you know, it ends up being a referendum on Trump instead of Biden. And that's where Biden does well. You don't want to have an election based on whether you like Joe Biden. You want to have an election whether you like like Trump, right, or one of his opponents. So potentially, but that's a dangerous like burn thing, because, man, like this guy tried to overthrow democracy. So what if you have that plan and it fails? So many questions to be had, and honestly, it's just getting started right now. And so we'll just have to see as time goes on. Is, is Ron DeSantis even going to run? Um, it definitely looks like he's going to, but when, it's, when would he announce? Would he announce in February, in the summer? Pff, I mean, dog, like, we don't even know, bro. So there's just so much to find out right here, but not really too much of a media splash and not a Trumpian kind of thing you see here with this speech. Seems very different. Um, than the 2016 Trump thing. 2020 Trump campaign messaging was garbage. Um, and I don't know if part of me thinks that he's just kind of like he's not going to be able to do it. But part of me also feels like his base will be enough to carry him really, really far. And, um, you know, Ivanka Trump is not associating herself with this campaign either. So, you know, a lot of stuff going on. But let me know your thoughts on the campaign announcement down below. What you guys think what's going to end up happening? Because, man, what a crazy, crazy uh, situation.